box left hand is where bass starts. years old you gravitate towards the bass what what the heck so here's what happened with that so <laughs> because of club dates at the time bass was a compulsory double what, what you, year was this this is 1973 okay. when i first this is july 73 when this all got started so i started playing i, I ended up borrowing my friend richard Littman's old epiphone bass from him a guy i went to high school and i started bringing this bass along you know i was like nah i don't want to do this i'm a guitar player i'm a rock and roll star leave me alone you know <laughs> give, give me my uh, give me my few shekels and I'll be on my way. You know, so I'm um, I'm uh, you know. So I started um, playing guitar, you know, on these gigs, and then I decided, well, maybe I should legitimize myself, and I started to study guitar with a couple of people. But the real pivot point was that a guitar player that was recommended to me by the band leader was an up and coming musician named Ira Newborn, who's very well known as a film composer. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he's done big movies. He did all the Naked Guns. He's done a lot of TV shows. And he was with this up and coming group called Manhattan Transfer at the time. They had just gotten their record deal. They were doing gigs at places like Trudy Heller's in New York. I went to one of them. And he um, handed me his bass. And I started playing this bass. And I said, wait a minute. I've really been playing the wrong instrument my whole life. Right. So, what was the question? Was saying, what the hell made you want? Why the bass? The Why the bass? Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get the long answer to your short question. Yeah, you know, so I knew I, I knew that, vaguely that it was the bass that Paul played because I was a Beatles obsessed yes. toddler. Right. Like one of those like those kids who were like all about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Like if they'd had like themed birthday parties in those days, like they do now, yes. it would have been all Beatles stuff. Okay. So I knew that I knew that Paul's guitar only had four strings on it. But that was about it. Advanced. And I kind of vaguely knew, <laughs> yeah. And I knew some of like a doon, 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 right. doon, 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 doon. Like I knew some of the, but I didn't really, I, I didn't really have a conception of what it was. My dad hands me his brother, my uncle, uh, my old, his, his old uh, Dan Electro Longhorn. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was like, what is this? He goes, well, it's the top four strings on the guitar, just an octave lower. Mm -hmm. And, I'm, and immediately I was like, oh, okay, I got that. And I just, hitting the root notes of the chords, you know, I, I, I wish I could tell you, like, from the moment I got it in my hands, it was a revelation. It really wasn't like yeah. that. But then I started paying attention to bass players. Besides McCartney, there's what I call the Mount Rushmore. Yes. So McCartney, Entwistle, John Paul Jones, Jack Bruce. Right. Um, and... Don't forget, this is the 80s now. Yes. So it was 1984. It's a great decade for bass players. Correct. Yes. You had John Taylor. Paladino. Pino, Paladino. Paladino. Well, you had a lot of bass playing front men. Yes. You had Sting. You had uh, Richard Page from Mr. Mister. Mm -hmm. um, you had Mark King. Right. You had all the guy Haircut 100. Those front yeah. players. Uh, Kajak Goo Goo. Totally. One of your favorites. Totally. Um, and then R and B, you, you know, there were a lot of guys doing the bass. Was a brothers Johnson were exactly, right. exactly. Um, something clicked at that point when I saw what bass players wow. did. Something about like the weight of character. There was also, do you remember a TV show called Rock School? Yes. It was on PBS. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was an English show mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. I don't know what the I don't know what the this bass, is the bass guitar. This is the bass guitar. We're going to move on to the fretless now. <laughs> I've got a phaser pedal. It sounds like this. <laughs> Yo, yes. My that, favorite show. There was just something really cool about that. It's it's a twofold. I was in a band. We were playing in somebody's basement. I'm playing drums. Who knows what kind of a what song it was? But it was in the mid, early earlier 60s, 65 mm -hmm. or so. And I'm playing, and there was me, two guitar players, a keyboard player and a bass player, which was really rare. 
and he had a precision and a Fender Bassman, which was like unheard of at that point, because sure. everybody had a, an Ampeg B12 mm -hmm. and a Hackstrom. And we were playing, and everything's fine, and I'm playing the drums, and all of a sudden, the bass player stops playing. And the room, all of a sudden, was like almost quiet, even though everybody else was playing. And I'm, whoa, that's great. He's got power. Mm. If the bass player stops playing, it sounds like crap. Half the music. I really started off as a singer more than anything else. Oh. Yeah, I was I, actually as a kid, I sang at Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center in a choir. And then um, I eventually, in ninth grade, yeah, ninth grade, uh, I was <laughs> the vocalist of a band that played mostly instrumentals, which is <laughs> just not the most rewarding gig. But they, they, were, they were actually pretty good for a bunch of 14 year olds and then occasionally do a few Deep Purple covers. So oh. I did channel my inner Ian Gillen for, <laughs> for the best of my ability. I don't have those, those sky notes but I can, I can cover them. But what happened was, um, at one point, I don't know for what reason, the bass player in the band had to leave for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to keep rehearsing. And so the guitar player very patiently just, you know, he left his bass with me and he started, and he just taught me, you know, maybe five songs, so just so we could keep, re keep rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you strap this thing on, and of course I'm in a room full of bass players mm -hmm. here. You strap this thing on, oh my Lord. Uh, you know, it's just the, the vibration just goes right through mm. you and it's like this is and, you know I'm 14 years old the hormones are <laughs> and and this was just this is incredible I've got to keep playing this and I've got to keep learning it. Oh, I, and, in so, 1965 I played the New York World's Fair and I was a saxophone player uh, in those days New York State Pavilion We did our, our show the band was called the Long Island Sounds yeah. uh, Not to be confused with Gene Simmons Long Island right. Sounds, but we were probably better um, <laughs> And I was playing saxophone, and I was playing alto saxophone, and like a few weeks before the gig, my dad bought me a brand new tenor saxophone. Mm. So I had to transpose everything, mm. like right off the bat, which was a little frightening in those days. Um, and uh, I guess my claim to fame was like the Wooly Bully solo. Yes. That was 65, so mm. the Beatles were taking hold, yeah. you know, in America. And, um, I, and you know, you ha I had a play a guitar or something like that. So I guess the next group of guys that I started playing with needed a bass player, and it was just something about it being different mm. than a guitar that I guess attracted me. I, I was listening to, uh, I listened to it again the other day, that song by Marmalade, Reflections of My Life. Right. Fantastic bass part. And I realized that's the stuff that I was always drawn to. I mean, it still goes back to Paul, always, right. always, always. But that's the stuff I was always drawn to. You know, you hear that, you know, and you, you hear a lot of that in my music. And it's just, that's where, where it always was. Any, any fool can play guitar, <laughs> but nobody dances to a guitar solo. Right. What instruments did you start out on? Guitar. Okay. Yeah, actually, piano. piano. Right. And that's where I learned how to get my bass shit together. Okay, so you learned Because you know, I tell you, Bach, he's the man. Is that right? Bach's left hand is where bass starts. Have other bass players said this no to you? No one has ever said that to me. Well, it's... It's about time somebody said it. You listen to Bach's left hand and you'll hear the origins of modern bass. Okay. Arpeggiated chords. Am I right? I'm taking notes. Okay. <laughs> right, Bach's left hand. And I'm not the first cat to say this. Who was the first cat to say this? I don't know. I read it in an interview somewhere and then I investigated it further. I said, oh my God, this shit is real. <laughs> Bach was the first bass player, a modern bass player, mm -hmm. I should say. Okay. What, how did you gravitate towards the bass? Um, money. <laughs> Have you ever seen the original ads for the precision bass? Uh, I remember Jim Fiedler. That's probably the earliest No. One. Whoa, geez, dude, 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 they're I'm like 10 years late, I'm man. Maybe, anyway, maybe. if you look in yeah. some of the books about the origin of the bass guitar, if mm -hmm. you will, you'll see that the original marketing campaign by Leo Fender mm -hmm. was bass players. Increase your income. <laughs> okay. You can double. My mom had a guitar. Mm -hmm. She was terrible. Um, she, I mean, she was so bad that it was like sad. I mean, you could, it, it would, would have been a comedy skit. Oh, okay. She, uh, but we all sort of played guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, we learned, we were self-taught and I did, uh, I played, you know, in school talent shows and then I was in bands. Mm -hmm. I sang in bands mostly. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a really good guitar player. I probably was a good flutist, but I could not improvise a note. And 
I always sang. I sang, you know, in uh, all state choir. I sang in church choir. Okay. I did all kinds of uh, things. I loved singing, so I did that. Um, I didn't know anything about bass for forever. Um, How did you gravitate to the bass? I didn't start playing bass till I was almost 30. It was so crazy because I, I quit singing in bands in college. You know, I quit. I just all of a sudden one day woke up and I went, what am I on today? You know, like, am I doing acid? Am I? And then I realized I was like totally straight. And I just, I never did drugs again. I never drank. And I said, I don't want to sing in a band. I have to like get drunk and stand up there going. So I quit music totally. And I was, um, Living with John Paris, really young, I was mm -hmm. in graduate school studying art, mm -hmm. and um, he was making tapes in the house, like one tr one tape and pa banging on a cardboard box, and he'd go, "Come on, sing, sing," and I'd go, "I don't want to sing." <laughs> but one day he put a bass in my hand, and he said, "Do this, like can't explain," and he showed me how to slide oh, up the okay. bass, and I swear it's like that moment, I fell in love. Like I didn't even know what I was doing, but mm -hmm. I just knew that I was going to ruin my life. <laughs>